Hi and welcome to video 3 of unit 4 topic 5 samples and confidence intervals and this is from the math methods curriculum so we're looking at sample proportions today and we're covering a couple of exercises in the textbook talking about how we build and use sample proportions particularly where we're taking multiple samples and also where we're looking at a small or a large population so we're going to start with a small population let's consider the simplified version of example 2 from last lesson in example 2 last lesson we talked about a list of 26 students in a made up class of mine and I've just taken the top 10 of these students so students from A to J and we're going to sample four of them now I've already done a random sample just for this example and the numbers I got were 5, 6, 2 and 3 and so those students were Eleanor, Fred, Bob and Carrie now if the attribute is, is male then my sample proportion is 1, 2 out of 4. So I chose 4, and 2 out of 4 of them were male, and that being Fred and Bob. Um, so there's a sample proportion from a sample of that class. Now, let's take this a little bit further. What are the possible outcomes to this sample where we continue with the attribute is male? And the possible outcomes are that I have no males, or one male, or two males, or three males, or four males. And they're the possible things that could happen. The question here is, what is the probability distribution? Do I already know my expected times that I'll get zero males, one male, two males, etc.? Well, let's first define a couple of things. Um, over here to the side, I'll do this in a color that hasn't been used yet. Uh, P is equal to, now if I go back up here, is male is my attribute. And there are six males, so P is 0.6. It's a very simplified example, but my probability of getting success, which is choosing a male, is 0.6, uh, which means my probability of failure is 0.4. And I'm sorry, girls, I'm just using that example today. Um, and of course, our N is equal to 10. I've got a sample, oh, sorry, our N is equal to 4. I've got a sample of 4 out of 10 um, in the possible group. So our probabilities here would be 4c0 times by 0.6 to the power of 4 oh sorry this is 0 so 0.6 to the power of 0 times by 0.4 to the power of 4 and that's equal to something which I'll calculate in a moment and then I've got 4c1 times by 0.6 to the power of 1 times by 0.4 to the power of 3 and I'm going to populate this list now for you and so you'll be able to see what comes up So there's our probability distribution and of course if we sum those five numbers together we should get a sum equal to one. I haven't actually done that um, but that's what should happen. So we've got a binomial distribution and it indicates to me that 3, 4, 5, 6 and 3, 4, 5, 6 are getting two or three males are equally likely and the most likely. Next most likely is getting one male and then four males and then no males. But it gives us a bit of an expectation of what we should get. Now we can use this as well to determine the expected value of x and the standard deviation for this distribution. So the expected value, ex, you might remember is equal to np and it's the sum of np. So what I'll do is I'll take, um, well actually I'll just write this down, these values. So it's 0 times 0 0.0256 and I'll quickly do the rest of them. And this is equal to 2.4. And that's interesting, which I've indicated in green here, because getting 2.4 males is kind of what we expected anyway. We're taking a sample of 4, so the overall, the normal calculation of expected value would be equal to NP 
the sample size times by the probability, which is um, 4 sample size times by the probability of success 0.6, which is 2.4. So doing it that way, we get the same anyway. Of course, the variance is a little bit less interesting, but the variance of x is equal to npq, and in this case, the sum, also, the sum of npq should be the same again as doing up the sum of each individual data point for npq. And so in this case, I'm just going to do n times p on q, which is 4 times 0.6 times 0.4 and that will be equal to 0.96 and of course the standard deviation of x will be equal to the square root of the variance of x my writing is getting quite sore I might just zoom in here and that's equal to the square root of 0.96 and I've left the lack of room so I'm going to just do that all on one line and so the square root of that value is 0.98 that would be your standard deviation uh, so we've calculated our expected value and our standard deviation all the best